Hey guys, welcome back to the MOBA series. Today we're going to dive into combat and implement an auto attack system that will continuously damage our enemy when the function is called. In addition, we'll be setting up a basic health system for both our player and enemy via a stat script. Please note at this point, there are no visuals or UI to show for it. Just the system for now. With that being said, let's jump right into the video. To begin, let's download an attack animation. If you already own an animation, you can skip this part. I usually get all my animations from Mixamo, where you can browse through a wide variety of animations by searching the keywords attack or punch. For this tutorial, I'll be using a punch animation since my character doesn't really have a weapon. Once you've found an animation you like, click download and open the drop down of skin. Have it set to without skin. Then set the frames per second to 60 and click download again. Once it's downloaded, you should have an FBX file. Let's drag it into our animations folder and create a new folder called combat. Inside that folder, drag the animation and click on it. Go to the right tab and set the animation type to humanoid. Then click apply and move on to the animation tab. We'll rename the animation to punch and tick the loop time box as well as the bake into pose option. Change the body orientation to original and click on bake into pose again while making sure it's set to original. Lastly, tick bake into pose one more time and also set it to original. Click apply and when you enlarge the animation window at the bottom right, you should be able to play the animation. It may look a bit funky right now, but it won't really matter since we're doing a top-down perspective. Moving on, let's click on the player and open the animator window. Click on the base layer and drag the punch animation we imported earlier. Now click on the plus button at the top and select bull. This bull will be called in the script and we'll name it is attacking since we'll be checking if the player is attacking. Let's continue by setting up the animation transition. To do this, Right click on the idle and run animation and click make transition. In this transition, we'll have has exit time and fixed duration unticked and set to zero and set the transition duration to 0.1. When we play it, you can see that it smoothly blends in the attack from the idle and run animation. To finish this transition off, at the bottom where it says condition, we'll press the plus icon and click on is attacking and make sure that it's set to true. We'll do the same transition backwards so that it goes from the punch animation back to idle. Have the same settings, but the only difference we'll have here is setting the transition duration to 0.3 and having the is attack pool back to false. Now we're going to create a stat script for both our player and enemies. Let's start by going to our player and adding a new component called stats. Open it in Visual Studios and let's get rid of both the start method and update method. The variables we need here are a public float named health, another public float called damage, and a public void named attack speed. After that, we'll create a public void called take damage that will take a game object named target and a float called damage. In this method, we'll simply get the target.get component stats, then access the game object's health and subtract the damage. Next, we'll create an if statement where if the target stat is less than or equal to zero, we'll destroy the target.game object. Back in Unity, for our player, let's have the player health set to 100 while setting the damage to 10 and the attack speed to 3. Now, going to our enemy, let's add the stat script as well, and we'll just set their health to 100. Let's continue with our player by creating a melee combat script. Open it in Visual Studio, and let's begin by adding a required components for this script. Above the class, we'll write required component type of movement, as well as required component type of stats. This ensures that we cannot use the script if the movement or stat scripts are not included on the character. This is a crucial step, so make sure you have those components before adding the script. Next, let's define the variables we need for the combat. We need a private movement called move script, a private stat called stat, and a private animator called anim. Let's create a header called target to separate it in the inspector. You don't have to do this, but if you don't want to, we'll just add a public game object called target enemy in this header. Now let's create another header called melee attack variables. We need a public bool named perform melee attack, which is set to true. We'll also need a private float named attack interval and another private float called next attack time, which is set to zero. In the start method, we'll set move script to get component movement, stats to get component stats, and anim to get component animator. Now let's move on to the update method. We'll set the attack interval to stats.attack speed divided by 500 plus attack speed. Then we'll multiply that by 0.01. This is what calculates the attack speed or the time between our attacks. Setting the number from 500 to 1000 or even 100 wouldn't make a difference but would just allow more flexibility in the inspector. 
I found out that 500 was kind of the sweet spot, which makes the attack speed of 3 give a decent amount of time between each attack. Next, we'll set the target to move script the target enemy. We'll then check if the enemy isn't null and the perform melee attack is true, and if the time that time is greater than the next attack time, We'll do another check if the vector 3 distance to see if the player position is close enough to the enemy, which is the move script stopping distance. If these conditions are met, we'll run the coroutine melee attack interval. Outside the update method, we'll create a private I enumerator called melee attack interval. In the coroutine, the code works line by line. Here we'll set the perform melee attack to true, trigger our animation by doing anim.setball is attacking to true, then do a yield return wait for seconds and store the attack interval float. Lastly, we'll check if the target is null or dead, set the animation bool of is attacking back to false, while also setting the perform melee attack back to true. We'll now create a method that we'll call in the animation event. Name this private void melee attack. In here, we'll call stats.takeDamage and store target enemy in our own stats.damage. We'll set the attack time to time.time .time plus the attack interval and allow the perform melee attack to be set back to true. Finally, we'll set the anim.bool is attacking to false to stop the attack animation. That's all we need for this script. Now we're going to call the melee attack function in our animation. Let's head back into Unity and go to the attack animation for our player. Make sure you're on the animation tab and scroll down until you see the events section. Here, you can drag the white bar at the bottom right to quickly view your animation. What we want to do here is create an animation event. For example, if you want the player to swing their arm, you can add an animation event at that specific moment in the animation. To do this, click on the plus button on the left side of the events tab, which will create a new animation event. From here, you'll see that you can choose from the different function types such as float, int, string, and object. Next, we'll rename the function to the melee attack method we've created in the script and click apply. Finally, we'll set the melee combat script as the object. And that's it. We've now successfully set up our player for melee combat. When you press play and select the enemy, you'll see that your player runs towards the enemy and starts attacking them continuously once they're in range. If you want to cancel the attack while the enemy is selected, simply click on the ground. You can also perform an animation cancel similar to the ones in League of Legends to quickly attack other enemies. Let me show you the difference in attack speed when you change the value from 3 to 6. You'll notice a significant change in the speed of the attacks. The higher the number, the slower the attack. When I set the animation speed back to 1, you can see that the enemy is attacked rapidly. Now let's talk about how to damage the enemies. In the example, I've set the damage value to 10. This means that every time I perform an attack, it will take away 10 health from the targeted enemy. You can keep an eye on the enemy's health in the inspector by watching the enemy's stat script. When I press play and attack the enemy, you will notice that their health goes down by 10. Once their health reaches 0, the enemy game object will be destroyed and the target will be set back to null. And that concludes this episode. In the next one, we'll be adding a health UI for both our enemy and player, and we may even experiment with making the damage RNG based. Thank you guys for watching and I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. Bye!